Joining us right now in studio, it's Texans head coach Lovey Smith. Coach, congratulations on the victory. I know you were eager for this one, eager for all of them, but it seemed like in the fourth quarter you made those clutch plays that you've been seeking, defensively and offensively getting the big drive to take the lead. Yes, it's uh, it's hard winning, of course, in this league, and um, we've uh, attempted to a few times this year and uh, haven't been pleased with how uh, we finish. Team's been working on it hard. Uh, but to be in that environment, you know, in the division, the division opponent on the road, and to see the guys just, you know, play our best ball at the end of the game was, uh, was a lot of fun to watch, and hopefully it can kind of springboard us to uh, to do all the games that way. Did your words about finish uh, reverberate in Damian Pierce's head as he was trying to finish that run? Coach, we talked a little bit about that after the game. The, the thought on the sideline of seeing a physical play like that breaking tackles, he's not going down, everybody's trying to get an extra block. It felt like the whole sideline got charged up at that moment. Did you see it from your vantage point that way? Yeah, and John, how could you not get really fired up? But first, when we say finish, we tell the guys to play until the whistle blows. Yeah, whistle hadn't blown on that play, and it could have. Talking about second effort, third, four, I don't know. He might have maybe probably close to every – Defensive player had an opportunity uh, to tackle him. He kept his feet moving. And it just wasn't Damon. It was also uh, our lineman yeah. kept blocking throughout. And as a coach, when you want, you know, you talk about finishing. But it is always better when you have an example. Believe me, that play will be uh, run and show for uh, many years ago. Yet you feel like he might have a few more of those in his bag before it's all said and done even this year, Coach. Are the types of running plays you're calling changing, evolving as the season goes on? Is this what you started out with? Have you changed things because of the way he runs? Well, Mark, I said most of the the runs that we're, we, we've been running them a while. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, once the season gets going, you could do them out of different formations and things like that. But a lot of the, the, the same runs are – you know, teams, there's only so many runs that all teams yeah. really use. And uh, it's who's running them, though, as much as anything. And uh, you learn to run them better. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. And as far as Damon is concerned, you know, it seems like each week we've talked about, hey, he's a good player. We need to get him more and more carries. And that's what we've been doing. I think that's as big. You just look, he had over 20 carries yesterday. And, you know, a lot of that came at the end of the game. In mm-hmm. other situations, we haven't been able to get him that many, so we need to feed him the ball. That's what we're learning. Coach, how is continuity paying off for your offensive line? This is, I think this is the fourth game in a row where you've had the same offensive line together, whereas last year I think we did the math and there were, I think, 11 different combinations and for different reasons, COVID injuries, et cetera. But how much is the continuity playing into the way they're playing up front, and how much is Damian kind of feeding off what they're able to do? I think it plays a, has a big role in what we do, and especially the offensive line. You know, we don't rotate offensive line. Right. You want to keep that group together as much as possible. Each year, if you look to teams that have success, they're the ones that are able to do that or kind of injury-free yeah. as much as you can possibly be. So um, we're excited that that's the, that's the case, you know, five games and two. And it has to, you know, for all of them getting to know each other. You know, Damon's a – you know, a young back, rookie running back. So guys haven't played a lot of football together. That's why I'm excited about, you know, going into the second quarter and just seeing this group grow together, keeping the offensive guys for the most part. We have been injury-free with every one of keeping them together. Coach, how'd you feel about the aerial game yesterday? You made some plays. You made the third and ten on that go-ahead drive in the fourth quarter. Uh, Davis made some other plays as well. Nico had the big catch. Yes. Not a high volume of yards, but you got the job done overall. Yes, and there's a game plan that we go in that that we, you know, you want to execute it. And uh, that was the case yesterday. We wanted to lean on the run, you know, uh, but that leads you to opportunities in the passing game. You mentioned the big catch by Nico, huge. Jordan Aikens on the side, Brandon Cooks getting involved. So, if you continue to run the ball well, it'll open up those one-on-one opportunities. And we feel like we have some good matches, uh, you know, once we can get those. Coach, the interception of Derek Stingley, there's 
there's so much that goes on with it because it ties into the game against the Chargers. It's a rookie getting his first interception. It's another rookie making a heck of a play to take away one of the routes. When you were seeing that play develop on second and one, did you did you have a thought, first of all, they would go back to that play because they had run that play earlier that the Chargers had run on you. But then when you come and stop it that way, what kind of satisfaction do you feel as leader of the defense to see your guys step up and make a play at that point against that play that had bothered you the first couple of times you saw it against the Chargers and earlier in the game against the Jags? Well, John, we, we know in NFL – if uh, you show a sign of weakness yeah. or, or a sign of, of a play that you didn't play as well, you're going to get it. Yeah. Most teams, they look, all right, what hurt you the week before, and they're going to run them. So we, we had an idea coming in that we would have to eventually stop those plays. Uh, but to see us play it better, and it's just about that. You're not going to always make the plays, but sure. you don't want to continue to make the same mistakes. And uh, that was a huge play, uh, you know, in the game, and you never know when that play is going to be the one. Yeah. And that's why for Derek Stingley to get his first interception, of course, on that play, and for that to happen, uh, Jalen Petrie played it well first. For him, the the the, the first uh, target, of course, is a guy in the flat, and Jalen took that away that forced him to throw it deep. All right, so Stingley makes the pick, and then he brings it out of the end zone. So is that a <laughs> great play? No, don't do well, that. How do you handle that as a coach? Well, Mark, we've kind of analyzed that a little bit too now. What Derek was thinking is that we had a defensive player. There were three guys, three offensive players that could have made the tackle, one being the quarterback. And we had a defensive lineman close to them. So Derek saw three of his teammates he thought would be in position to make that, uh, to make that block to give him a chance. Every play we're trying to score, sure. what we're trying to do. But no, seriously, that was the case. But whenever you're that deep in the end zone, of course, next time, that's a part of us. First, you got to get that first interception. Then we start coaching them from there. We'll mm -hmm. coach up that next time. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of coaching, I don't know, Coach, if you made any significant adjustments in how you were playing the run, but it felt like in the second half you were doing a much better job against their run. They did a couple of a chunk runs on you early, but the second half it really felt like you clamped down. Did you make any big adjustments or just guys doing their job a little bit better? Uh, I, you know, John, most of the time we, we're going to say that we don't call a defense that's, that's, that's not sound. That right. If a team runs or, or – you know, some uh, coverages you have a little bit stronger with certain routes. But as far as the run is concerned, we should have someone. So whenever you're seeing a breakout, that shouldn't be happening. But if we tighten up some of those things, uh, yes, we did. And um, hopefully we can uh, put a full game together as far as tightening up those things. Well, you kept them out of the end zone, and that's the key. But you have a, a guy who's a heavier runner. Then you have the guy who's the lightning back. What about facing that when ETN checks into the game and how different it is? Well, that's it. I mean, everybody has a history coming in. And, um, you know, we part of our game plan, of course, going in is when a certain guy comes in, what do they do? You know, and it's like that throughout. I mean, teams, you know, when Rex comes in for us, they have a, you know, the odds are we're going to maybe lean a certain way as far mm -hmm. as run a pass. So we have that in mind. But what what you can't do is that, tendencies are made to be broken. And that's how you get a tendency of doing it a certain way but changing it up. So you'd have to cover the waterfront. Coach, you've said this many times. 69, 70-man roster, everybody's going to play. Everybody's going to play. And a lot of times that's lip service from, because look, everybody's going to play, everybody's going to play. But yesterday, everybody was playing. You had two waves of linebackers going in. You obviously, you rotate everybody on the D-line at all times. Everybody was playing yesterday. Hey, was that due to weather or just keeping guys fresh or was that just you wanted to give different guys looks at different times because you thought maybe it was a better matchup with these guys on the field versus these guys? How did you kind of look at that? I think it was a combination of all of the above. Uh, first, it was a little warmer, and we knew that before the game, so that would have told us to try to play, get more guys for us to be fresh at the end of the game. But And then just the players and those backup roles on whether we feel like they deserve an opportunity to play. And there's not going to be a big drop off. We can still win with that player. That should help us. Yeah. And that was the case. And and then, and then number one, the third one is just the guys that have been playing. Have we been completely satisfied with with what they've been doing? And uh, so I think all three of those uh, factors kind of play came into play. Putting another player in the spotlight. You mentioned him a bit in your press conference, but Desmond King. We talked about him. 
Uh, the veteran able to make a lot of different plays yesterday. It's, it felt like he was all over the place, all over that secondary making plays. Yes, Dez King does so much for us. He's a football junkie. He knows ball, starting off with that. But, you know, punt returner, uh, that story nickel back. He's also played corner for us this year. So he has a big role, can do a lot of – put on a lot of different hats uh, for our defense. But his play at the nickel position yesterday – Big, of course, finishing the game with an interception. We'll get him to uh, get down on the ground a little earlier, too, with that situation <laughs> also. But third down stops. You know, you're playing a passing team. A lot of time our nickel, our wheel linebackers, are at the point of attack. And, 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 and really, Dez made play after play uh, throughout. Outstanding game by him. Coach, you told me at halftime you wanted, you wanted a takeaway. Well, Sting gave you a takeaway. But you also turned them over. Fourth and four, Dez got the knock away. Fourth and one, you got the stop. Fourth yeah. and ten at the end. So in all, you as you said in your press conference, you ended up getting five turnovers in in that particular ball game because of the way that you should look at a fourth down. You had a fourth down stop. Now, obviously, after the fourth and four, you went down and kicked a field goal off of that. You got those turnovers and takeaways. Maybe not in the traditional way, but you got them in the way that you probably wouldn't have cared. You got them. Absolutely. We, we talk about fourth downs that way. If we convert... Um, it is a takeaway. So those were huge plays throughout. You talked about what happened after that. But, and then your traditional way of getting takeaways, um, it's about that. In a game like that, part of our DNA has to be us taking the ball away, getting more opportunities for our offensive score. All right, so the bye comes a bit early, and it depends on how you would evaluate that, Coach. What are the benefits of having the buy right now? I guess a buy in general has its built-in benefits, but this early in the season, here we are going into week, week six. I, I think, Mark, each year it's a little different on how you, you're feeling. I just know where we are right now. We played five games. We had three preseason games. So eight times we've kind of kicked it off a little bit. But having a little break right now, just we kind of like where it is. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in pretty good shape. We have a chance to really get healthy right now. And we have a sample of who we think we can be this year to be able, as coaches, to analyze everything that we've done and go from there. Uh, so uh, early, late, seems like it's the perfect time for us where we are right now. Do you think it's good for the rookies in that the preseason games, they play a lot in those, so – that is really a I, big chunk of a college season, I, yeah, <laughs> along with all the off-season stuff they've been doing and camp and pre-draft stuff and all of that. Yeah, that's why if you add it up, I mean, you know, eight games is quite a bit. Uh, if you talk to those young guys, especially guys like um, Jalen Petrie and Stingley, they played every snap pretty much uh, throughout the season. It does add up. and But it really feels good right now, too. I think maybe – you know, going to that buy mark on a win, that helps an awful lot too. Can't can on that make that. Coach, I always I always love this because people always talk about making adjustments. Oh, you make halftime adjustments. You're like, no, 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 no. We make adjustments all the time through the game. And I think when teams get to a bye week, oh, you're gonna self scout. You self scout all the time, right? Yeah. You're self scouting at all times. But during a bye week, is there something more that you're looking for because you have a little extra time to go through that? Well, uh, I guess I'm supposed to say, John, yes. But <laughs> as, you, as, as you, you put it, you are. When you see something, you're constantly evaluating what you're doing. Yeah. And you can't wait for a bye week. You can't really wait till the end of the game. You can't wait for halftime. You're constantly making those changes. But sometimes you do move on and you forget some of the things that happen. And now you have a body of work to have a, a – all right, cover two. How many times we played it? What are the stats on it a little bit? You know, for me, I self-scout what I call defense leads week. Pep, Frank, we all, our coaches do that. But uh, when you have a week, but we're doing that. And also we got an opponent coming yeah, yeah, in right, up course. right away. This week you can do it in a little bit calmer environment and really analyze things a little bit more. It's like when you're getting ready for an opponent. If they're playing, you know, you're getting ready and stuff. But for us, it, it just worked out perfectly where, you know, the Raiders are playing tonight. We don't have a game. We can really watch that game. There's so much you find out from just watching them, you know, watching the game live. 
I mean, do you feel like he gets uh, shortchanged on a bye if you play Monday night then go into your bye oh, week? It's not lost going a day. to apply to the Texans. It applies to the Raiders, though. <laughs> yeah, well, we like that they're that they're in that situation. Yeah. You know, they're a good ball club, and um, I think they're saying a lot of the same things <coughs> yep. that we are about, you know, uh, records should be better. Coach, you've been in the NFL for a long time. Mark has. I have. We all, we've all been in the NFL for a long time, but – we're going to do it first next uh, next Sunday. Not this coming Sunday, but next Sunday. Going to Vegas to play a football game. Yes. Strange, odd. You looking forward to it? I mean, that's yes. what's the Raiders. We talk about the Raiders later. But just playing in Vegas, how different that'll be. Yes, and uh, new stadium. I think I've played at every new stadium except for this one. So I am excited about going. To, you're right, football in Las Vegas seems a little different, but we're getting used to that. But, um, but it's still, eventually, though, I mean – their uniforms hadn't changed, right? <laughs> yeah. They're silver and black still. Yep. They're the Raiders, so we'll be excited about them. And they have, a, as I said earlier, they have a, an a excellent ball club. And so that will be a big challenge for us, too. I feel like I want to ask you this next week, but I'll ask you this now. Will the rules change on the road with you being in Vegas as far as team hotel players and all of that? How Will you adjust or just – depend on them being professionals and, and handle business as usual. Is there, is there some different, I mean, it's ah, different Vegas. air, water, food, <laughs> uh, fans. I mean, what's different? It's a quiet we town. To, we it's have to, we have a routine that we go through, mm -hmm. you know, we go to any other town, Jacksonville, our guys weren't going down to casino. They weren't hanging out. Mm -hmm. So it's a business trip for us. We're going to, Guys are going to dress. Have you seen where our guys dress when they go on a business trip? They yep. dress up well. It's a business trip for us. We're going to go out there, same purpose, a little different, you know, different area codes. about it. Coach, you're a football fan. You've been a football fan, I mean, forever. Is there any time where you look across the field and you're like the Raiders? The Raiders, to me, for some reason, I don't know if it's because NFL films I watched. I don't know if it's Willie Brown running for the touchdown and the Super Bowl. I don't know what it is. But it's like I see the Raiders out there, like it's the Raiders. Like it doesn't intimidate me, or you know, but it's the Raiders. It's just a little different. Are there any sort of teams or places where you go where you're like, you just have that kind of twins of twinge of nostalgia, like, hey, we're playing the the Chiefs or the Dolphins or whatever. For me, it's the Raiders. Is there a team like that for you or teams maybe in college too? Well, I have teams, and I'll say the Raiders are one of them. Uh, yes, growing up, Al Davis, the Raiders, and what he means to our game, uh, the silver and black. Lester Hayes, go through the guys that have played uh, for them. And it's the NFL. There's some traditional teams. So that is exciting, and that would definitely be the case. And there's a – I go down memory lane a little bit like that with a few teams, but uh, that's why we're really excited, you know, when we get an opportunity to go out there and play. All right, Amogee Bank, ask coach question of the week. And you mentioned Dusty Baker. The Astros about to begin their postseason run and you and Dusty and Steven Silas posted or posed for that great photo you took atop the buildings downtown Houston. Uh, which sport, if it wasn't football, would you rather coach, mm. pro baseball or pro basketball? We have to insert Ooh. you on the sideline or in the dugout. Which one are you going to take, Coach? Oh, that's an easy one. Growing up, you know, I've been this height since I was born in eighth grade. So I was, you know, I have a few relatives that are a lot taller than me. I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. So a uh, long time basketball fan. So um, I, I like baseball an awful lot, but a diehard uh, basketball uh, junkie, you could, you should say. So it would be the basketball sideline of the basketball team. Coach, what sports did you play growing up? What did you play in high school? Uh, you know, in high school, you Everything. play, them, you, you play, play them, all. them all. But we only had three. You can only play. You can only run track, basketball, and football. They're big fans. Yeah. Did Wait, them all. Have Did you talked all. to Dusty about just the dynamic of being – he's a manager, but he's a coach – of that team or of a baseball team for 162 oh. games? I mean, you get 20 of these a year plus <laughs> yeah. whatever. 162 plus spring – and the postseason, and spring is no joke because that's 30-something games. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, we talk about a lot of things, but I, it, it's hard for me to picture that. And um, and what Dusty would probably say is one thing to talk about managing a team like that. It's another to talk about players playing that many. Look at how many games our players play now. Uh, but eventually, though, it's about to finish. You get to the playoffs. Yeah, and now it seems like it's it's a smaller season, and um, that's why I'm so excited. And 
I kind of know what I asked Rose. We have a history now on what we're going to do. So just really excited about us bringing that trophy home this year. Did you like it? Would you rather have no DH and have to deal with the Ooh. double switches and lifting the pitcher and those kinds of decisions? You, you know, it's um, it, it makes sense in, uh, in, in a way, but that's a big part of the game also. So the, the more, you know, uh, you look at it in football a little bit, there's kind of third receiver, there's some roles and stuff that are – not maybe full-time roles and stuff to have a big say in what happens. So I look at that the same way. All right, Coach, thanks a lot for the time. Have a great bye. All right, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.